just a few days. Most normal blood is dead. It's cremated. It is fibrinogen reaction. In other words, uh, it is clotted. It is oxidized. It has turned dark brown and clumped within four days. And your blood was taken 27 days ago, and it's still alive. This is a true story, and you can verify it with the people, and they're in the telephone books in Boulder, Colorado. And so he threw them back in the waste material. One month after that, it's now 30 days plus 27. It's 57 days later. Those slides are still orange in a little spot in the center, about a half a millimeter in diameter. That blood had circled the wagons, stopped the evaporation process of the air escaping underneath the cover slip, and they were still swimming around alive. So Mike and Mike got tremendously excited about this. They coined the phrase, immortal blood. Now how long are you going to live if your blood is immortal and your immune system is restored and the adversary is banished from your body like the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? God lives within and so does the adversary. What's going to happen if you stop looking for him in the horror houses and the gambling joints and the sin parlors? And look inside of your own blood. This is a metaphysical friend of mine talking. You can do it in 21 days, two hours a day. And what happens? Amazingly, the people who had terminal cancer, who were inoperable, cancer that had metastasized, were well. And this created a tremendous flap in the state of New Jersey where a few oncologists, cancer specialists, are using this technology. So we got together on the in conference calls, and on page 9 and 8, I think, of your paper in the second half, it gives you the opinion of the oncologist, not Bob Beck. I'm not a medical professional. I'm a physicist. I was an engineer. I've done a lot of things in my life from photojournalism to girl watching, but I'm basically a physicist. I was reminded that cadavers, the corpses that medical students carve up in medical school, may have died on Main Street with a bottle of Thunderbird and a brown paper bag under his arm. When his body is sold to the medical college, soaked in formaldehyde, and they begin the dissecting, they find, without doubt, this man has had cancer about ten times during his lifetime. But his friends, if he has any, say he's never been to a doctor, he can't afford it. The cancer has mysteriously vanished. What happened? Any doctor will tell you that when your immune system is restored, when your immune system is intact, your immune system manufactures 2,000 known neuropeptides. Among these, it can be verified by chromatography and electroporation at any medical laboratory that does chromatography, which means they put the blood in an electrical field on blotting paper, the proteins will precipitate out and they read from the, like a spectrum analysis, what's present in the blood and what isn't. There are two specific neuropeptides that seldom appear and normal blood, and this is interleukin and interferon 2 and 3. How many of you heard that these are specifics for cancer? All right. Good audience. That's for people who don't see the audience. It was about 11, maybe 12 people in the room. When your immune system is unloaded, your body begins reproducing all of these essential neuropeptides, which are specifics. If you're dying of cancer and your immune system is fighting this day and night, you do not have these. They cannot be detected in your spinal fluid or your blood. When you get rid of these adversaries in the blood, you have them again. What has healed that cancer? 
Maybe. It is the inner Lucan and the inner Feron and about 2,000 others, according to Norm Cousins. I knew him before he died. This isn't Norm Shealy, it's Norm Cousins. He used to be with Biomedical in UCLA. That was his last job. And it was about six years ago, otherwise we could easily have saved him. We could have saved Tim Leary, all of these people who proclaimed they wanted to die, had cancer. Human interferon and interleukin would cost about $50,000 a dose. And you'd need about 10 or 12 doses. Who has got a half a million dollars to put in medicine that your immune system can manufacture all by itself if it's healthy? Just like the most powerful medicine on demand is a tenth of a penny per gallon. For the package of Wrigley's chewing gum, the dollar and eight cents, you can restore the immune system, which happens to be able to handle any known catch. Now these doctors in New Jersey are terribly worried about this because this might mean the end of very lucrative practices that are thoroughly FDA and medically approved which means surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, etc. But we have dozens and dozens of people now whose biopsies are completely clean. One of them's in the room tonight, whose CAT scans are totally clean. They cannot find one cancer cell in their bodies just because they have restored their immune system. So one of the serendipities that I did not believe, I could not believe because this was too simple, I was looking for extremely complicated processes. I was looking for a vaccine that would take another 10 years to produce. Like a gentleman asked me, why won't vaccines and antibodies work against HIV? His answer, he answered his own question because they mutate too fast. The minute the HIV and many, many, many other adversaries in your blood detect these vaccines, they will mutate and the vaccine is worth back at start, but they have no defense against blood electrification, they have no defense against silver colloids, they have no defense against magnetic fields. Everything that you could possibly ask, in the last five years we've compiled the questions, we've tried to put in this paper, we suggest that if you can't afford one, you go up and ask for one for free and Jane will be delighted to give it to you. No, I'm not profiting from this. I have to keep saying it because people can't understand this. I am selling a few prototype units that one of the manufacturers is giving me for my cost. But that's the only thing I've done. I've supplied all the hospitals that have done this work with free units. All they have to do is give me their stacks of reports which we have proving that this is the only thing known which consistently cures HIV. And why can't I just share these openly? Why can't I pass them around the room? I had to sign five pages of legal documents which started out patient confidentiality, confidentiality non-disclosure agreement. Until these studies are published in peer-reviewed medical journals, that means the New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet, JMA Journal, JAMA, until they're published, it would be like giving this information to the National Enquirer. And yet every person I talk to, I'll be right there, says, I want more proof. Well, those are the people that are trying to shoot this thing down, believe it or not. That's their unconscious death wish. Yes, sir. Are you testing this on a quote, unquote, healthy body? Yeah, I'm perfectly healthy now, and I've been using this thing two hours a day. Started out with a healthy body. Well, I was bald and I was fat, but I was healthy. I'm not bald and I'm not fat, and man, is my libido off the scale. I'm in my 70s, but I can look at a guy in the bar now. I think I can. That's paranoia. But anyway, uh, it works. There are no side effects. The only side effects are like this lady brought up, detoxification and electroporation, and all of that is explained in your paper. And just get rid of garlic in your diet. Yes, sir. The maximum current you can get through there without heating it up is just one or two joules.